Good morning. Happy Thursday. Bless the Lord. You are in the furnace. If you are listening to my voice right now, that means you have stopped and you have caught the replay of Thursday's teaching. We honor God for the ability uh, for for the grace, for permission that he would use us as vessels to share his word. And we just thank him for being faithful to us. I'm Bishop Lashelia Garrett. I'm the senior pastor of Covenant Christian Church. And I happen to serve in Kingdom Agenda Fellowship, uh, where Chief Apostle Moore is our, um, our head of our fellowship. So we are thanking God for his grace that is always sufficient for us. And we bless him for being an amazing God. Um, we're going to jump right back into our teaching. We've been sitting in a, a place where the Lord is dealing with us on our faithfulness and on stewardship and on servanthood. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a few minutes. Good, good, good morning. How you doing, Minister Pope? God bless you. God bless you. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go on and spread the word, spread the love. Uh, let somebody know that we are having another moment in Kingdom Agenda Fellowship at the 6 a.m. We're on the book again, you guys. Uh, we bless God for that. Uh, we're going to go to the throne of grace very quickly and ask the, Lord's, um, ask the Lord to give us precision in the word today. Father, we bless and honor you and we thank you for your perfect presence. We thank you that you are everywhere at all times. And we thank you, Lord, that there is nothing in us that cannot be submitted to your feet. And your Holy Ghost stretch us and make us greater and, and strengthen us, God, and correct us. And, and even on all of all of the, the, the bent up places, God, you take the crooked places and you make them straight in our lives. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us and allow us to sit in you and for you to move in us and us to move in you. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would take authority over the teaching this morning and let nothing, nothing be spoken, whether that is speaking it verbally or that is speaking it non-verbally. Let nothing be spoken or transferred that is not in your perfect will for this morning. Great is your faithfulness toward us. And we will continue to serve you. We will continue to honor you because you, O oh Lord, are our strength. Strength like none other. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. God bless you guys. Um, we are in our, we continue in our stewardship teaching. And uh, let me get, let me get my little notes right we continue in our stewardship teaching this morning and we continue trusting god um for what he is doing in our lives now this is the thing about growing in the word of god when we grow in the word of god when we find ourselves being pulled or pushed or tugged on so that the word of god is manifesting all the more in our lives Think it not, um, don't, don't marvel, don't be amazed when we begin to be tested in the areas that the Lord is strengthening and shoring us up in. So as we grow on learning about being faithful, blessings, God bless you, Sister Kawana, as we, we, we grow in faithfulness towards him, right? As we grow in our understanding of stewardship and our understanding of servanthood, don't get taken off guard when we begin to be tested. Good morning, Chief. When we begin to be tested in the areas that the Holy Ghost is stretching us in. Good morning, Overseer. When the Lord stretches us in an area and we begin to grow in wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Or oh, watch this. When our understanding <coughs> excuse me, has been challenged in an area because we grew up with our, with our mama nymphs. And we really did not understand how to rightly divide the word of truth. And so if it came across the pulpit, we believed it. I know I'm not the onlyest one. <laughs> we believed what they said. We didn't go back and check the word, try the word by the word. It wasn't until we began to grow up and mature in him that we understood, wait a minute, I need to go read this for myself. I need to study this for myself. This is where we are right now. We're in the place where the Holy Ghost is saying we're going, we, we need to be showing up in our, in our acts of service for the kingdom. 
We're going to have to be shored up in, in our acts of being, um, 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 let me, a steward, I'm sorry, over the mysteries of God. When, when we're steward over the mysteries of God, the Lord says, are you protecting my uncompromised word with abandon? So, so think about it like this. Are we protecting the word of God, the, how it's going out, ensuring that it is a balanced word, that it's weighed and it is not wanting? Um, are, are we settling in him and, and learning line upon line and precept upon precept so that when we share the word of God, we share the word of God and it will stand on its own because we shared it in its original intent. We shared it the right way. It was uncompromised. It wasn't, it wasn't flavored with opinion. It's all the being a steward over the mysteries of God. Why is, why is this necessary for this conversation? Because every area where you are allowing the Holy Ghost to maneuver and to make, it's like yeast. I need you to think about when they are kneading yeast so that the end product is bread. We are working with the bread of life right now. And every time that the anointing of God either begins to fuel and shore up what he's already spoken, he says, you're good, go with it. Or he begins to unravel some things that may or may not have been truth. In our hearts, we had no ill motives. Don't you know that being a steward over the mystery, mysteries of God, even though our hearts had no ill motives, if we still sowed the seed and it wasn't, um, it wasn't uncompromised, we still, we, we still have to be challenged in that area of our lives. So we're dropping in the word and, and God arrested me, not even about, good morning, um, woman of God. God arrested me not even 35, 40 minutes ago. And, and I've got to, I've got to run a, a rabbit trail for just a minute, but I promise you, I'm going to, I'm, I, I'm going to be mindful of the time. The Lord reminded me of, um, uh, of medieval ages when they were conquering a fortress. Stay with me. It's going to bless you. I promise you. Whenever they needed to conquer a fortress, they had to take the gate the, there was always one gate that when that gate was taken, it would lead them to the inner part of the fortress. So, um, good morning, Miss Brett. So when there is a, a fortified city, the fortified city has been encompassed by walls. And there are even walls within fortified cities. I think I need you to think medieval ages. So in the fortress, they always put it on the hill because it was for protection and, and it was difficult for it to be conquered coming uphill. Stay with me. We're going somewhere. All right. So the fortified fortress, in order for it to be taken, they had to do recognizance. And when they did recognizance, they had to figure out which gate was going to be the keeper to the city. Which gate would be the most critical gate for us? If we can take this gate, we have the city. All right, so let me come to the word of God. The Lord said that we are, we're dealing with gates in our lives that aren't the central gate when we do not give him access and control over the gate to our finances. Yeah, I know I came out of left field for you because he came out of left field at me. I just really want to just stay, stay in the scripture and stay out of this. Watch this. Uh, when we do not, God says, how long we, we cannot love both him and mammon. That's money. That, that's that, that the gate to the inner fortress of our walk with him, the gate to the city of our heart is such a minor thing. However, when we cannot conquer the minor thing of the Lord having, con okay, okay. All right, I, I got you. Of the Lord having control over every dime that is spent, the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us, not just for what we spend, how we save, what we save, what he says do with it. Um, oh, Lord, listen, y'all listen. Let me, because I believe in transparency. I haven't conquered this in every area of my life. 
And I said, God, why, you know, I, 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 I want to minister from an area that I'm good in. <laughs> Can, is, am I, give me some hearts and likes if y'all like, is the church out there with me? Listen, the Lord says it is going, you, we won't have a problem with being faithful when we surrender our checkbooks to him. We won't have a problem with being stewards when we take the earthly example of stewardship for the things that he has blessed us with and we manage them to fidelity. Um, we were talking about there were three things that being a good steward, we understood we walk away with. When we are good stewards over the things of God, we understand that those things we have to cover, we have to protect we have to preserve them and then we have the the commission or we have the assignment so that we can multiply what we're protecting and preserving you remember when when the um the nobleman left with the ten a treasury and and when he left the gifts with the ten they were told the, the assignment was to take what you have and multiply it. Protect it, multiply it. Protect it, preserve it, multiply it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's a part of the Bible we hadn't read yet. All right. So when we, let's go to the gifts. Let's try that. And, and the word of God, when he says, I gave five to one. Y'all with me? And then on down and he said, I gave one to one. And the one that had one thing did not protect, preserve, and multiply that one thing. The Lord is saying to us today that whenever he is allowed to take the sit, that gate, that one gate, when we have control over the one area that defeats most of us, being found faithful will never be an issue. All right. We have been in 1 Corinthians. Let me give you a scripture. We have been in 1 Corinthians um, 3, chapter, chapter 4, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and the, the anchoring scripture that we have been sitting in, uh, we started with one, let a man so consider us his servants. We talked about that already. Um, verse number 2 is the anchor scripture for us. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. Okay, so we're talking about faithfulness. It is easier, help me Holy Ghost, it is easier for talk about for us to talk about our faithfulness of how we share our heart gift. We can talk about, okay, so are you loving and is the love is the love pure? Is the love are we being compassionate? Are we being um do we show up? Are we committed? Um are, can people count on us to be there? We'll talk about that all day, all day, all day. But the one gate that we never really deal with in the kingdom of God where it is exhausted is the financial financial literacy in the kingdom. We don't deal with financial literacy enough in the kingdom. We don't deal with it enough because if we did and the Holy Ghost was leading and guiding every time we swiped, every time we wrote a check, every time we made an investment, if the Holy Spirit was leading and guiding in those areas of our lives, then we wouldn't be defeated in so many other things because money is a defense. So the Lord started dealing with me and kind of arrested the teaching. Oh, I've got plenty of solid teaching for us to walk in, but the Lord says not today. Today we want to deal with some root issues that are calling, causing spillage in other areas. God says, I want this gate. I want the gate of, of you walking in. You don't spend it if I don't say you don't spend it. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I, 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 okay. I feel, like, I feel like I'm in real sanctimonious church this morning. Listen. Listen. I, I don't have it perfected. I don't like when God t has me teach on or talk about stuff. You, you know that I'm still in the struggle with. And then the Lord says, why not you? Because... You can't get to the end of the matter and not, not along the way bless someone with what you are understanding. See, this is, amen, financial literacy. And, and this is why the kingdom is crippled. The kingdom is crippled 
because we are not managing, protecting, and preserving, um, and 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 um, um, protecting, preserving, multiplying the things that already belong to God. Being a good steward over the things of God says, Lord, I don't mess with your stuff without your permission. And when we can manage, when we can conquer the gate of mammon. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. When, when we can conquer the, this is what the Holy Spirit, this is what the Lord is, is, share, is telling me to share with us, 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 you, us, you, us, 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 this morning. He says, I need to be in every part of who you are. And that include walk down your bank account. Where is Jesus? Do you have three to six months of, of savings set aside that nobody touches? Do we have an emergency fund account set aside? And it is only for the emergencies that have already been predetermined. Going on vacation is not an emergency. Are we big balling and tipping God and not tithing? Are we big balling and tipping God and not tithing? Do our businesses tithe? Businesses. We want the come up. We, we want the come up financially, but we don't want to research and invest and extend ourselves so that the Holy Ghost can take the creativity that is in us. Remember, everything is an end goal and the end goal is always expanding the kingdom of God. The Lord says, I need the gate to your heart where you have your money because your heart is going to be wherever your treasures are. Where are your treasures? Where are our treasures? Where are the things that we, watch this, we are most faithful for the things and towards the things that our heart is connected to. You want to know why they struggle coming to church on Sundays? Their heart isn't connected to the commitment of serving the kingdom, of being a servant in the kingdom of God. You want to know why they struggle with paying a tithe? It's because their heart is not connected with the things of the kingdom of God. You, you want to know why they fight and fuss about who's going to lead the song on Sundays? It's because their heart is not connected with which vessel does the Holy Ghost want to use this Sunday so that whoever is sitting in the audience can receive what they need to receive under the unction of his power. Is, is anybody in here with me? God says, I want the, I want that gate. I want the gate to the city of your heart of commitment that, that when you give me this, this minor thing, when you give me this minor thing, it's minor money is minor. The mindset on finances and money stuff like that. They walk on gold in heaven. That's minor to him. However, in the earth realm, it is one gate that until we surrender to the Holy Ghost, we will continue to struggle in every other area until that gate has been surrendered to him. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. But with um, me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or that's not where I'm hearing God say go this morning. I, I would love to get into my notes. I would love to do to to get into the stuff right here that 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 I want to talk about because that's a comfort area for me. This this is this is not a comfort area for me because God is still working it out in I'm still surrendering the gate. No man can serve two masters. Either, either we're going to serve him or we're going to serve mammon money. That's specifically what it's dealing with. And this, this morning, the spirit of the Lord wanted me to share with us in the furnace. Now it is time for us to bring every aspect of who we are under his submission. And that includes that checkbook. 
Because the truth of the matter is, as a steward, it's his anyway. It's his anyway. Will, will we be found faithful? Will we be found faithful in that? If the Holy Spirit said to you, I want you to go into your seed sowing account. And I want you to, to, to send a check for this amount. Of, I want you to sow seed out of this amount. Notice I said your seed sowing account. I heard this about maybe 20 years ago and I've been asking God for this, this, um, this way of life. Lord, I want to be a reverse tither. I, I want to, I want to tithe the 90 and live off the 10. Do you know where we would need to be financially in order to live off the 10% of what he gives us? And to be able to take the 90 for use in the kingdom of God. That, that's what he meant about big doing business until do business. Occupy, do business. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to get too many amens this morning off that one. Glory. So we are at this place in him. Where he says, surrender the gate to wherever your heart's desires are. Give me that gate to the city. Let me get into the city in that gate, wherever your heart is. You'll never be found wanting. You won't be weighed and found wanting. When we surrender to him the area or areas that we fortify the most. Bishop, how do I know that? Check your heart. Where, where's your heart? What, what is so rooted in your heart until there's a struggle to let that go? Not saying that you won't, but does the Holy Spirit have to contend with us? That's, that's an area that he says, give me that gate. Because when he, he can rule over those gates. He said this morning that your faithfulness will no longer be an issue. Faithfulness, period, will no longer be an issue. Commitment, period, will no longer be an issue. He wants, good morning, daughter. He wants the gate of our heart. Where is our heart rooted? Can he control the simple thing of money? Because it is a defense and it does answer all things. Can he control how we respond? God wants that gate. God wants that gate. Working on it. Am I there? Mm -mm. I'm not. I'm not. So let me encourage you. I know that um, our our partner church, our covenant church in Kingdom Agenda Fellowship, uh, Bishop Petway. I think uh, the woman. Yes, she mentioned it this this morning. Uh, Bishop Petway began. I think I saw something pop up. Financial literacy teaching in, in on Wednesday nights. I think in Bible study. J drop in if they're live. Eat, eat the meat. Eat the meat off the table. Wherever we are getting word and we are being shored up or corrected in our thinking, in our understanding, we are going to be tested. Being found faithful begins with wherever our heart is sitting because it is a, out of the abundance of the heart our mouth speaks. Our actions take place. God says, give me the gate that is keeping the rest of you away from me. Because when I come, when you give me that, when you surrender that to me, they'll never have to ask you to volunteer to do anything. You'll be mindful and you'll be connected enough to know where the Holy Spirit is shifting and what he's doing. I promise you it works. I give you my word, it works. It works. It works. 
I pray that you have been blessed this morning. I, I, um, <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to get a lot of interaction on this. Why? Because this is an area, honestly, where the enemy has a stronghold in many of our ministries, in many of our homes. And the church is only as strong as the weakest family in it. That's not an indictment on either the church or the family. That is simply saying that when we strengthen the least of us, then strength has been gained to all of us. Many members, one body. Many members, one body. Does God have control over your finances? Period. If you can answer yes, praise God. Can you help the rest of us? If you answer no, or, or I believe so, if we're not sure, that means we need to be strengthened so that strength can come to the body. Loving you in him. Come back and watch the replay. Watch this again. Uh, don't dismiss it. Let it, let it, let it, let it begin to shift us. Let the Holy Spirit challenge where we are. And we respond honestly and integratively. Heaven already knows. So that he can begin to deal with us. You are only as strong as the weakest link. That's right, overseer. So that he can begin to deal with us. I promise you we're still in. We are in. Will we be found faithful? The Lord said to me this morning, until... I am the master over your finances, Lashelia, in every area. Other areas are going to struggle. And I had to share that with you this morning because he's saying the same thing to you. All right, God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your rhema today. Lord, we're praying right now that you would network us, get us connected into, let us do the things. You can give us supernatural ability to, to do things that will turn around everything else in our lives. God, we pray for the simplicity of simply being faithful in giving. Faithful in how you said to give it. Faithful in a way, God, that everything that we have is always protected and the enemy can't get in and and sow seeds of destruction. Father, we honor you and bless you. In the name of Jesus, we speak life over your people today. That we may be examples of who you are. And we will walk fully in what you say and how you say it. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, he is the only true and living God. Amen and amen. I pray you were blessed this morning. Join us tomorrow. Uh, we'll be right back here on the book. We're going to be with Bishop Petway. Um, Overseer Petway, if you can share links or anything in this teaching or on Covenant's page, anything like that, uh, that will connect us to the uh, literacy teaching that's coming um, through the ministry there and through the bishops uh, there, let us know. Share it. Those of you who are strong in this area, the kingdom has need of your gift. Don't hide your gift. The kingdom has need of your gift. The kingdom needs your voice to arise right now. Oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. The kingdom needs your voice to arise right now in this area. All right. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. We love you. We adore you in him. Have an amazing day. We'll see you tomorrow with Bishop Petway. Um, five days a week, Kingdom Agenda Fellowship is coming. 6 a.m., we're right here on the book. Like those pages. Uh, Chief Apostle, Monday through Wednesday. Uh, we're on on Thursdays, and then we travel to Mobile on Friday. There is no excuse for you not to be strengthened. In Jesus' name, amen.